Hi, good evening, everybody. I thanks for joining us and sorry for being a couple of minutes late. My name is Kevin Newsom, and I'm one of the admissions officers here at Olds College. And joining us today is my colleagues, Olivia Knight, who will be the main person talking uh, today, as well as Margot Cartwright, who will be join, who will be taking a look, for answering your questions, um, and as well moderating with our faculty who will be joining us uh, later on for the Q and A. So right now we will continue on here. So. Just to acknowledge that Olds College is located on the traditional territories of the Nitsipa and the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, which includes the Siksika, Pikani, Kainai, Sutina, and the Stony Nakoda First Nations. It's also the area of home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, region number three. And so today we do have a lot of information to get through. So this is a bit about our agenda. So we'll also be doing, uh, so we'll covering our animal health and equine programming, as well then a Q and A with our admission staff and our faculty who will be joining us and uh, wrap up at the end. As well, if you stay tuned right to the very end of tonight's session, there will be a $25 campus store promo code that will be only valid for 24 hours to get your some Olds College uh, clothing swag. So I won't hold up anymore. So some of you may be unfamiliar with the GoToWebinar uh, setup. So on your right-hand side, you'll see something that looks like this screen. Just to test to see if it's working correctly, if you see the little hand, press it and that raise the hand. So if you're looking for questions, go ahead. As well, as we hope that you'll answer, ask a lot of questions, that you'll see lowered down the box questions where you'll be able to type your question for our staff that either will be able to answer directly or as well after our main presentation, we'll be answering those questions live for everybody. So to test it out, if you can go into the question box and type which of the programs you're interested in. And so just a little bit about the college itself. So we are a historical landmark. As we started in 1913, originally what was called the Old School of Agriculture and Home Economics. But since then, we have gone from everything from short certificate programs up to the four-year Bachelor of Applied Sciences options. And if any of you happen to be an international student, Olds College is a designated learning institute so that our programs of more than eight months are eligible for post-graduation work permits. And so besides the programs related to animal health and equine, Olds College does offer programs related to agriculture, uh, ag technology, business, horticulture, land and environment, tourism, brewmaster, and meat processing, as well as trades and apprenticeship programs. And since you're all here for not to hear me, I'd like to turn it over to Olivia Knight, who is our admissions officer for the animal health and the equine programs. Over to you, Great. Olivia. Great, thank you, Kevin. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. So as Kevin mentioned, my name is Olivia Knight and I am the admission officer for the programs we will be discussing today. So we're going to jump right in and start off by talking about the Animal Health Technology Diploma Program. 
So we'll move through our slides here. And so the Animal Health Technology Diploma is a 16 month accelerated diploma where you will be taught the Canadian Veterinary Medical Association accredited curriculum. This is gonna prepare students to write the Veterinary Technical Technician National Exam. And it's going to move individuals towards a career as a registered veterinary technician. So in the Animal Health Technology Program, you will be trained to provide hands-on care to a variety of animals, both large and small. Our campus features a small animal clinic and a working farm with a variety of large animals on site. So this provides students with many opportunities to gain experience in handling, treating, and caring for live patients of all sizes. In this program, you're going to learn about diagnostic laboratory procedures, animal disease, anatomy and physiology, surgery, anesthesia, diagnostic imaging, dentistry, and client communication. Animal health technology students work as team leaders with the veterinary medical receptionist students and the veterinary technical assistant students. And all of you provide care to the animals within our programs. As part of this program, students are going to utilize their skills to obtain a six week industry practicum. And this practicum can be completed at a clinic of a student's choosing. So for the Animal Health Technology Diploma, we do offer three intakes or three start dates per year. So the summer intake commences in July with applications opening the first Wednesday of October, the year prior to the intake start. Our fall intake commences in October with applications opening the first Wednesday of December of the year prior to the intake you want to start. And then our winter intake commences in March of each year with applications opening the first Wednesday of the March prior to the intake you want to start in. Each of our intakes has 30 seats available. This program is very high demand and intakes will fill very quickly. So as such, it's really great that you're here this evening to learn about the program and learn about how to apply to the program. Students can apply to more than one of the intakes each year. So as I said, the Animal Health Technology Diploma is an accelerated diploma and it offers very limited breaks throughout. Students are gonna commence the diploma with two months of online asynchronous learning in term number one. Once that term's completed, students will then come to the Old College campus to complete intensive hands-on learning for 12 consecutive months. Due to the structure of the AHT program, students are required to take this program full-time as it is a structured program. Students are not able to take fewer classes and extend the program over a long period of time. So this is really important to note, perhaps if you're a student athlete. As, it, as you're a student on campus, students will be on campus Monday to Friday for the better part of the day, if not the full day. As an example, the students who are currently on campus are in classes or labs on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. and Tuesday to Thursday from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. There's also going to be time requirements and commitments outside of the class, classroom. As this program does involve learning with animals, you will be actively involved in animal care throughout. You'll be involved in the chores and the day-to-day -day care of those animals. Students are scheduled to complete animal care rotations on a weekly rotational basis. So this does re require you to be on campus in the evenings, weekends, and on holidays. The program wraps up with a six week practicum. So Old College does offer some articulation agreements that provide graduates the opportunity to continue their education. So graduates of the Animal Health Technology Diploma can move on to the Old College Bachelor of Applied Science Agribusiness degree program. 
Graduates can also consider pathways into Thompson Rivers University, located in British Columbia, to the Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies program, or the University of Lethbridge, who offer post-diploma Bachelor of Arts or post-diploma Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Studies. Please be aware that this Animal Health Technology Diploma program does not transition into a Doctor of Veterinary Medicine program. Students wishing to become a veterinarian should really reach out to the specific institutions to determine their admission requirements. So to become a registered veterinary te technologist or technician in Canada, you must have developed a standard of knowledge and skills by graduating from an accredited post-secondary program, such as the Olds College Health Animal Health Technology Diploma. And then you will be required to successfully pass the Veterinary Technician National Examination, or the VTNE. Each provincial veterinary regulatory body may have additional conditions to become a registered veterinary technologist or technician. Upon graduation, there are many career opportunities available, including working in a veterinary clinic, livestock operations, diagnostic and research laboratories, pharmaceutical companies, government veterinary laboratories, and even educational facilities, to name a few. So we'll move on and discuss the admission requirements for this program. So our admission requirements are based on the high school academics and other foundation courses that you are going to build upon in the Animal Health Technology Diploma. As I previously mentioned, this program is a high demand program where applications far exceed the number of seats available. Intakes fill quickly and the program is competitive entry admission. As such, applicants are required to meet the admission requirements that are outlined on the screen to be considered for the program. Applicants with academic averages in the four required academic courses of 80% or greater will be considered for admission, while applicants with academic averages in the four required courses of 65 to 79.9 will automatically be placed on a floating wait list based on their academic average. Having a post-secondary background will assist in providing up to four additional percentage points on an applicant's academic average, but will not be considered to override the admission requirements. Post-secondary courses may be considered for the equivalent of academic admission requirements if they contain the same course content as the high school academics. An applicant's academic average is not going to be calculated until the work experience or job shadowing verification form has been submitted. Students are required to submit 40 hours of work experience in the industry. And this experience is extremely important in providing future students with an insight into the career. Students are required to observe a reg registered veterinary technician and a doctor of veterinary medicine to ensure they are prepared for the rigors of the Animal Health Technology Diploma Program and the career. Any applicant who is currently in high school or who is completing upgrading must submit a proof of enrollment in any of the required 30 level courses not yet completed and a final mark of 65% or higher in the corresponding 20 level courses. Now, if you have any questions regarding your specific situation, education pathway or requirements, please feel free to reach out to me at animals at oldscollege.ca. We are going to be covering the high level information today. So like I say, if you do have specific situational questions, please reach out to me at animals at oldscollege.ca. So prospective applicants who may not meet the academic requirements for the Animal Health Technology Diploma can consider applying to the Veterinary Medical Receptionist Certificate Program. If students successfully complete the Olds College Veterinary Medical Receptionist Program with a 3.5 GPA or higher, and have the required grade 12 academic courses 
at 50% 50, 50 or higher, then they are eligible to apply for admission into the AA Animal Health Technology Diploma. Please note, seats are not guaranteed for students completing the Veterinary Medical Receptionist Certificate Program. Moving on to the Veterinary Medical Receptionist Certificate Program. So the Veterinary Medical Receptionist is the face of the practice. The primary focus is in the interaction with the animal owners, booking and scheduling appointments, invoicing, awareness of breeds and animal behaviors, and then also being aware of the clinical procedures. Less hands-on with the animals, more face-to-face -face with the humans. We offer two delivery options for the VMR program. We have an on-campus program and an online program. The two delivery options are the same course content, just in different formatting. Students in the on-campus delivery will come to campus from September until April, completing hands-on and classroom-based courses. Then the students will move out into a three-week industry practicum. So you'll get to work directly with industry professionals. Students in the online delivery option will participate in online courses from September to April, and then they'll head out into a three-week practicum. It should be noted that the online program is a full-time asynchronous and synchronous learning environment. Many students ask about working while taking the online program. While some students do find this feasible, it may be difficult to find a work-life balance and complete the online courses. Online programming is offered via Moodle and students will need to access a testing center for exams, and that can be at any approved testing center. The Veterinary Medical Receptionist Certificate is a high demand program with the on-campus program typically filling by Christmas when applications open in October. So veterinary medical receptionists provide a vital link between customers or clients and an organization's staff and services. Many students will secure employment in the industry at their practicum location. Moving on to admission requirements for the Veterinary Medical Receptionist Certificate. This program is a first qualified, first admitted student admission process. Applicants who do not meet the standard admission requirements may be considered for alternate admission. This alternate admission status is for applicants who may not or will not complete one of the academic admission requirements. To be considered under alternate admission status, students would need to provide a portfolio and that information can be found either on the website or by reaching out to me again at animals at oldscollege.ca. I'm always happy to discuss your options with you. The Veterinary Technical Assistant Certificate is a four month certificate program and it prepares students for an entry level position in the animal sciences field. So within the program, students are going to learn animal handling, husbandry, equipment and instrumentation, and clinical procedure skills. Students are then also going to complete WIMIS training and learn all the skills necessary to become the assistant to the registered veterinary technician. This program is offered on campus only and that's due to the intensive hands-on requirements of the career. So this program and all the animal programs are preparing you to be successful once you move out into industry. Now I will note, don't confuse the, uh, um, the, veterinary, med or the veterinary Technical Assistance Certificate with the Animal Health Technology Diploma. This program does not qualify you to be an, a registered veterinary technician. The Vet Tech Assistant Certificate is a high demand program. Therefore, it is encouraged to apply early with applications opening in October for the following fall intake. 
The program is usually at capacity by the end of October and applicants are first qualified, first admitted. We do not offer an alternate admission route in this program, so students must meet all the standard admission requirements or be working towards the requirements. Applications open the first Wednesday for the following fall intake in October. So whether you work in an office, at a school or in research, you'll be spending much of your time in kennels, outdoor enclosures, labs and operating rooms. Veterinary assistants care for animals under the supervision of a veterinarian or registered veterinary technician. They are responsible for feeding, bathing and exercising the animals and they restrain them during examinations and treatment. Admission into the Veterinary Technical Assistance Certificate is based on the admission requirements outlined in the slide. And again, this program is for first qualified, first admitted. And again, it is a high demand program. And so applicants who meet the admission requirements will be considered for a seat in the program. So applying early is strongly encouraged so that you avoid disappointment. Moving on to some of our equine programming now. So Olds College currently offers two equine related programs. The first we are going to discuss is the equine reproduction technician certificate. So the Olds College equine reproduction certificate program was first offered at Olds College in 2018. The program's been developed from our established breeding services that are offered through the college for the last 20 years. This program is an eight month blended learning certificate aimed at providing graduates with the knowledge and skills necessary to participate in or operate in an equine breeding facility. This program combines four months of online learning with four months of on-site hands-on training. During the online portion of the program, students are going to learn the anatomy and physiology of the mare and stallion, an early pregnancy, managing horses to maximize fertility, breeding management, including manipulation of the estrus cycle, managing infertility, and managing the pertinent mare and the neonatal foal. On-campus programming then involves hands-on training in hand breeding, stallion semen collection and insemination, transporting cooled semen, frozen semen and embryo transfer, as well as managing and treating problem mares. Students will also participate in the management of pregnant mares during, prior to falling, during falling and after falling as well as the care of that foal. Students will have the opportunity to practice and perfect these skills as a participant in the Olds College breeding foaling operation. Students will participate in the on-campus portion of the programs between the middle of March and the end of June. Applications open the first Wednesday of October for the following fall intake. And if you stay around towards the end of the presentation, we will hear from Dr. Marian Anderson, who um, is the lead instructor in the Equine Reproduction Technician Certificate. So this program is designed to prepare students to manage their own breeding operation, but not to prepare to them to undertake specialized veterinary or research activities. So some opportunities in your career, you could become an owner or operator of a breeding operation, a manager of a large breeding operations, or you could work with an equine veterinarian at a breeding farm or in an equine practice. So reviewing the admission requirements for the equine reproduction technician, this program fills on a first qualified, first admitted basis. It's really important to note that we do only accept 12 students per academic year, so applying early is encouraged. 
That small class size allows students to work closely with the horses and get the hands-on experience that's needed to excel in the industry. Now we do offer two admission routes into the equine reproduction certificate. So perhaps you are an individual who completed the Olds College Equine Science Diploma in previous years, or you're an individual who is going to complete the Animal Health Technology Diploma. If you have a program GPA of 2.0 or higher, you could potentially move into the equine reproduction technician field. We also have a direct route from high school. So if you meet the academic requirements and you have 120 hours of job shadowing or employment, you can be considered for this certificate program. Now, it's important to note that students must be comfortable and proficient in the handling of all types of horses to be considered for this program. That's why it's important to have some job shadowing or employment hours under your belt. Moving towards our Farrier Science Certificate. So students in the Farrier Science Certificate program will arrive on campus in the fall of each year. The, the Farrier Science program started at Olds College back in 1971 and now has developed into a program that's offered yearly. So our Farrier Science Certificate program is recognized as providing the finest farrier programming in North America. The program covers trimming, forging, and fitting handmade shoes combined with horse anatomy, physiology, welding, record keeping, and business management. Everything you need to set yourself up for a career in the industry. Olds College has a state-of-the-art farrier facility. So the facility is equipped with 12 gas forges and four coal forges, a classroom with computers, and a 16 foot workshop trailer for industry field trips. Classes take place in the equine center and our farrier science instructors are industry leaders with their own farrier businesses. So you're learning from the best. They are keenly aware of industry needs and trends and bring cutting edge real life experience into the farrier lab every day. Students in this program attend a number of working field trips. They visit over 500 horses at the University of Calgary's Veterinary Medical School, Yaha Tinder, and Banff Trail Riders Facilities. Applications open the first Wednesday of October for the following fall intake, and this is a one-year certificate program. Typically, farriers are most often self-employed. Working conditions and travel conditions vary depending on your geographic location and which services you offer. Graduates of the Olds College program are also encouraged to pursue their American Farriers Association journey person status after the program is completed. Students coming into the Farriers program should be well versed and comfortable around horses. So the Farrier Science Certificate is a high demand program and applicants are encouraged to apply in a timely manner. The admission requirements include the academic courses outlined and an applicant questionnaire. So this questionnaire includes completion of 50 hours of industry experience. The purpose of these job shadowing hours is to ensure that you understand the demands of the career and you're prepared to succeed in the program. The Farrier Science Certificate is a physically demanding program. While not an admission requirement, we really encourage our students to work on their overall fitness and core strength. Completing the job shadowing requirement prior to admission is going to provide you an insight into the high demands of this career. Students must be comfortable working with a variety of horses and working long hours. Alternate admission status may be offered to applicants who have not, who have not or will not complete one of the academic admission requirements. 
And again, please feel free to reach out to me at animals at oldscollege.ca if you have any questions. Now we've whizzed through the program information this evening, but now I am going to discuss how to apply to Olds College. So during the application process, students will submit an application online through Apply Alberta. As part of the application process, there is an, a fee of $90 for domestic students and $160 for international students. Once you've submitted your transcripts, if you live within Alberta, once you sorry, once you've submitted your application, your if you live within Alberta, your transcripts will come through to us electronically. If you are currently in high school, you will need to submit your midterm marks. If you live outside of Alberta, you would be required to submit a copy of your own transcripts. And then for the programs that we've outlined today, there are additional requirements. So if you're applying to the Animal Health Technology Diploma, the Equine Science or Equine Reproduction Technician Certificate or the Farrier Science um, Certificate, you will be required to submit those additional documentation. Once you are offered admission into the program, there is a $300 tuition deposit that's required to secure your seat. So a bit of important application information. Many of the programs that we've gone over tonight do fill on a first qualified, first admitted basis. Therefore, it's really important to apply early. Applications open 11 months prior to the program start date, therefore October for summer and fall programs and February for winter programs. It's important to note that our winter programming options are very limited. So students who are wishing to start in January may have to consider open studies if their plan is some business programs, um, as the programs that we've noted tonight all have um, either a fall, summer, or late winter start dates. The Animal Health Technology Program, like I said, is a competitive admission process, and so it is really important to review that information on the website because the programs discussed today do fill very quickly. Olds College offers a number of scholarships, bursaries, and awards. So what's better than free money? Everybody has to love some free money. Olds College gives away over $500,000 every year to our students. So students will apply for awards beginning on the first day of the fall and winter semesters. It's a one-time application form that will allow you to be considered for all awards that you're eligible for. And right now, I will turn it back over to Kevin, who will discuss living on campus. Thanks so much, Olivia. Uh, as I had mentioned at the beginning, there, is a, there was a lot of information about programming. But of course, study is not the only thing that you need to look at in choosing your uh, place of study. Of course, you got to know where you're going to live. And the picture showing right now is one of our on-campus housing options called Centennial Village. It's the, we like to refer to as a hotel minus the room service and in-room housekeeping. So it has one bedroom uh, with your own ensuite. The Big thing with it is that you would need to have your own, or you would have to have a food plan. So the cafeteria is actually right beside the building. And this is what the picture that it looks like. So you, as you can see the top left-hand corner, you would have your own double bed with liner, desk, your own three-piece bathroom, so shower, toilet, sink, gym, laundry, and as well the 
in the staff has a lot of uh, various activities to um, get to know your other students who are staying in the building. There's a room for approximately 400 students. Um, as well, you do have access to the other gym and fitness facilities just down the road. The other option on campus is our townhouses. And these are fill up quite fast and have particular requirements because just like the townhouse states, they have four bedrooms, you have your own kitchen, bathroom, uh, living area, they're self-contained. Uh, so they will, as part of the application process, you are part paired or put for with similar interests. Um, you can also have a meal plan as well. So if you don't want to cook or don't know how to cook, that option is available with the townhouses. With Centennial Village, it isn't. For more information, as well as the application process, um, go on the website, oldscollege.ca backslash housing, or as well, it should show up in the chat function on your right-hand side. If any of you are into sports, particularly competitively, we do, Broncos are our sports teams, but as well, we do also offer a lot of uh, intramural type through uh, our community commons area. These are our main sports. So we compete in the ACAC, or the Alberta College uh, Association Division. And our main sports are basketball, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, soccer and futsal, as well as women's hockey and badminton. And we are one of the only institutions in Canada that also have a varsity rodeo team. For more information, as well as if you're interested in seeing how you could possibly join the Broncos, go to www.gobroncos.ca, find out more information on how, when the ID camps are occurring, as well as how you become a member. And so our student life is our Students Association of Olds College, or the SAOC, they wanna make sure that your time here is not just about studying, but as well as enjoying the other aspects that come with uh, college life. So this is where you'll find the student clubs, what events and activities that they organize. Our on-campus pub is called The Crossing, as well as it's a place where you also can find uh, job boards. So whether you're looking for potentially uh, part-time jobs, summer jobs, as well as after graduation. Um, they also do offer off-campus housing uh, listings. So if you're not interested in living right on campus, that's the other option. And as well, we have what's called the Hive, which is a student area where you can study um, and have computer uh, meeting room areas, depending on what you're needing. As well, you can find more information about the extended health and dental benefits um, that come with your tuition. Our, the goal of the Student Health and Wellness Department is to also make sure that you're healthy. So we do have doctors and nurses on campus, massage therapy, counseling, as well as uh, Indigenous Services and, and Student Center to assist students in right from your adjustments to any needs that you might have. So besides our library is not just a library, we call it the learning commons. So besides your typical borrowing of books and devices, online resources and help with research, there's also a lot of technology support. So computer and printing, so if you happen to need to borrow a laptop, for example, as well as Google and account training. But also in case that you're having issues with your programs, there's a tutoring support, a testing center if you need to write any testing, 
as well as a lot of accessibility services, as well as other seminars, workshops to help you in things that you might struggle with going from high school to college, like time management, studying and exam taking, um, and as well in when you're after graduation, that job search support. One of the great things about our campus is the fact that with the programs that we offer, there's other options to be able to buy the stuff. So the fact that as we offer meat processing, you can buy meat directly from campus, brew, we have a brewery on campus as well. Um, so craft brewery, the greenhouse, the horticulture students, the vegetables and products they produce and grow, you can buy at a later date, as well as print services. So if you're needing binding or any kind of printing production done, it can be done all in one spot. And so just a couple of uh, advertisements, I'll say. In March is what we call campus tour month. So if you are within area or might be coming to old, book a campus tour for in the month of March and still get a free and get a free swag bag. As well, in May, don't forget we have what are called Discovery Day. So this is an opportunity for you to be able to come and learn different information sessions, programs and services, um, as well as application process, learn about housing. There's will be lots of prizes, discounts, and free applications. But if for the case for the programs that you're interested in, you're probably not looking in one, but maybe start in September. May will be a little late, but for other intakes, it'll be perfect timing to take advantage of that free application. As well, we have another potential opportunity. So if you apply and pay your deposit by June 1st, you will be automatically entered for a chance to win a $2,500 tuition credit. So if you've already have been offered and but haven't paid your tuition deposit yet, what's the best chance to get uh, some additional free money besides scholarships and awards? So as mentioned in the beginning, that take advantage of the promo code, promo25-7, to use in our campus store online uh, to get uh, $25 off some OC clothing. So you're ready for when you start to have it um, prepared. So that is the end of our main presentation. I would like to ask Margo as well as our faculty to come join us to for question and answer. Hi, Kevin. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Fantastic. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, for joining. I've been behind the scenes here um, answering the questions through the question panel. Uh, excellent questions. Keep them coming. We would like to ask our three panelists to join us. We have Eliza Brace, Carrie Ann Doran, and Dr. Marian Anderson. If each of you could unmute your microphone, that would be fantastic. And if you would like to turn on your cameras, um, you can do that as well. Um, that works too. Mm -hmm. Hello, hi. <laughs> Thank you so very much for joining us. So, um, first of all, I would like uh, to ask each of you to introduce yourself um, and how you are affiliated with each of the programs. Um, and then we will go right in and start answering all of those questions um, with regards to the program. So I'm going to go on my screen left to right. So uh, Carrie Ann, if you'd like to start us off. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Carrie Ann Doran. I am an instructor in the VTA and VMR 
programs here on campus. Um, I've been an instructor here with the Olds College for the, the last uh, couple of years, and I've really enjoyed my experience in getting to meet all of our students. Um, I also uh, help out in some of the HT labs as well, but you'll mostly find me in the, the Veterinary Technician Assistant and the Veterinary Medical Reception Program. Excellent, thank you. So Eliza, I will ask you to go next. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining all of us this evening. Um, I, my name is Lisa and I am in the Animal Health Technology Program for the most part as an instructional assistant and I get to help out with lots of different types of labs, everything from surgery and dentistry all the way into diagnostic lab tests and large animals, so quite a wide variety of classes. I just started here in September and before then I worked as a registered veterinary technologist at an equine only clinic and then at a mixed animal clinic. So it has been really fun to get to be here and I'm looking forward to meeting all of these potential students. Thank you. And Dr. Marion, would you like to go next please? Well, since I'm last, I guess I have no choice, right? Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to our, our panel discussion this evening. My name is Marion Anderson, and I've been with the college for freaking 25 years. That really snuck up on me. I didn't realize I'd been here that long. But um, throughout most of that time, or all of that time, actually, I have been the lead instructor for the Equine Reproduction Program, which is now the Equine Reproduction Technician Program. And so um, with that program, I, I not only teach students online, but I also operate the breeding and foaling program here on campus, which is the hands-on component for the equine Rep reproductive technician program. I also teach in VMR too. I also teach a couple of courses in VMR as well. Excellent, thank you so much. So we've had lots of great questions coming in. Um, so. The first question um, we'd like to ask is, how hands-on are the animal health uh, technician um, program? And what is the balance between theory and hands-on? So. I can go ahead and answer that if you want. So um, as far as the balance between everything, I find from what I've seen that there's a pretty good balance between your theory and your your hands-on time. Um, so you get to do quite a bit in lab and then you get to learn quite a bit behind the scenes, but there is a lot of hands-on learning, which is really great for, for everybody. And you get lots of time with animals and learning on some really fun models that we have at the, the college here. So there is a really nice balance between the two. Wonderful. So, um, Marion, can you talk with regards to the equine programs on the same type of question? What are those hands-on experience and what is that balance between theory and hands-on within the programs? Okay, well, the equine, science, the equine reproductive technician program is uh, a blended program. So you take uh, four months starting at the end of October until the end of February you take four online courses that are basically um, uh, addressing the basic science of, of equine reproduction management and foaling. And then you come onto campus in the middle of March and you are here from March until the end of June, from mid-March to mid-June. And during that time, you are totally immersed in the operation of the equine breeding and foaling program. So uh, the program is, is very well established. Uh, we have uh, five to six client stallions that stand here. Uh, we breed uh, between 120 to 150 mares per year. We fold out 18 client-owned mares. Students are totally immersed in that. They do the whole thing. So essentially, uh, I would say that the program is about 50% theory and certainly at least 50% or maybe more hands-on. Excellent, thank you. And Karen, could you um, 
carry on in the VTA and perhaps the EMR program as well, what you see. Yeah. For our veterinary technician assistant program, we offer that in the fall semester here on campus. Um, so it's a four month certificate and those classes are based on theory and hands on lab. Um, you have an animal handling lab component where you're handling small animals, um, cats, dogs, some exotic, you get an exotic lab. Um, no large animal labs in our VTA program, uh, strictly based on our small animals. And um, you also get to do some hands-on in the laboratory where we um, get to, to learn about disinfection and cleaning and setup and prep for, for surgeries. So that's a really exciting lab and one of my favorites on campus. The VMR program, so the Veterinary Medical Reception Program, is um, a, a one-year certificate from starting in the fall. In the fall, you have your um, animal handling. Again, we have um, a small animal, so we have cats, dogs, we have equine, and an exotic lab. So. Um, that happens in the fall. So I would say with the VMR program, there isn't as much um, hands-on um, because we really focus on um, some of the activities that regarding reception. So client um, communication scenarios, we do um, phone calls and other um, reception procedures. So there is not a lot regarding um, in the second semester regarding animal handling um, because we've learned that in the first semester in the VMR program. But you still get to see lots of different labs, just not all your labs have animals in them in the, in the VMR program. Excellent, thank you. Uh, can you please explain the chore rotation in the equine and animals programs? So perhaps we'll start in the AHT program. So with the, the chores, so as you move throughout your semesters, so for example, semester four is where you're going to have the most hands-on like chores. Uh, so they call it wards. And with your wards, you're going to be responsible for taking care of usually one cat and one dog while you're doing your surgery dentistry rotation. And they are 100% your responsibility from the time that they arrive on campus until they go back to the rescue. So you're in charge of making sure that they're eating, drinking, going out for walks, that they're healthy throughout their stay. And then it, when you're in semester three, you actually get paired up with the semester four and also get to do that just not as intensive of a responsibility when you're in semester three and then you also get to do when you're in your large animal rotation you get to do horse wards so they go down on mondays and wednesdays and to go have a look at our on-campus horses make sure that everyone's doing well give them a brush um, some extra tender love and care that Sometimes they need a little bit of attention and a good stress relief for students as well to go and hang out with the horses twice a week. So that's what the, the chores kind of look like as far as animal care goes in the animal health. Thank you. Dr. Marion, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, so um, whenever you have horses, you always have chores. And so chores are uh, an important component of all the, almost all the horses uh, here, especially, well, all the breeding horses, all the pregnant mares are all client owned. So all uh, but about 10 horses here are client owned. So that means that at any given time, we can have between 60 and 100 mares on, or horses on campus. And the responsibility of the students is to care for those horses. So there's two different types of chores. There is um, the chores for the breeding horses, which are all outside. And so you learn to drive the tractor and the trailer and drive around and feed hay and grain and take care of the, make sure the waters are clean, make sure the shelters are bedded, all of that kind of thing. And there's also folding barn chores. And so the mares, when they get close to folding are put into the folding barn. So that requires that 
those that those stalls be cleaned uh, on a daily basis, the barn be swept and and uh, the feed, feeding put out, plus mares moved in and out. Um, and then when they fold, we get to play with the folds a little bit, take the folds out and put them all in the pens. So yes, students that are here will be doing several chores twice a day, every day, seven days a week for the whole 15 weeks that they're here. Wonderful, thank you. Carrie Ann, would you like to add anything with regards to your programs? Sure, in the, um, the four month certificate, the VTA program, we are this fall, having some work integrated learning in one of our courses so that's a exciting new opportunity that we will have potentially some field trips off campus where we are working with some rescues and helping some other local organizations with their animal care so i'm for this new um uh, work integrated learning for our vtas for our vmr students uh, chores are very minimal we um don't have a lot outside of your class time for activities on campus regarding animal care but during your classes we do help and observe um, our HD students as much as we can with their animal care yeah wonderful thank you Olivia are you on the line I have an admission question for you I am still here Margaret yeah go ahead okay um, can you can applicants apply for more than one intake and are they able to use the same hours? So that's for the animal health technology diploma program. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah, so applicants can apply for multiple intakes of the animal health technology diploma and they can use the same verification form as long as the hours are completed within two years of the time they apply. So you will have to submit your documentation for each intake you apply for, but you can use the same hours in the same form each time, as long as it's within two years of application. Thank you. So, the next question, um, what are some networking opportunities that happen during the programs? Is it that networking as far as like the like potential jobs that they that they might come across? Yes. Yeah. So in the animal health tech, you do a six week practicum once you're finished your fourth and final semester. And you have the opportunity to choose a practice that you're interested in and would like to spend the first six weeks of your time out in industry at. And a lot of the time that ends up looking like a future employment opportunity. So that's a really great networking opportunity. There also is a portion nearing the end of your time here as well, where they do clinical skills weeks. And that's really fun because there's three weeks at the end of your final semester. It's kind of in between semester four, and your practicum where you have three weeks and you can kind of dive into any sort of industry experience that you're really interested in so there are some that are offered here at the college like anesthesia dentistry large animal equine uh, various instructors offer different streams that you can go through but you can also go off campus during that time so if you were really interested in going to an eMERGE clinic, you can spend a week in eMERGE, or if you've never got the opportunity to go to an equine clinic, you can spend a week in equine. So there, that's kind of a big networking opportunity and something that's really cool that students get to do. And I'm sure that there's been cases where maybe students have went for stream or to the clinical skills for a week, and then went to their practicum somewhere else and then potentially circled back to that clinical skills location. So nearing the end of your time in animal health technology, that's kind of where there's lots of networking opportunities. Thank you. How about in the equine reproduction? Well, um, 
all of the animals that are here for breeding and foaling are owned by clients. And so the students get to interact with the clients. In fact, that's part of the, the competencies that they have to learn. They have to interact with clients, both the fo with the foaling mares and the breeding mares. So there's certainly some opportunities there to, to get to know people in the industry and to see if there's opportunities for jobs. As well, we do have people that contact us um, periodically that do have a job oper op uh, opportunity available for students with reproductive experience. So that opportunity is also there. Um, also, um, if there's an opportunity if somebody in AHT wants to spend a little bit of time doing equine reproduction, um, there's an opportunity to, for them to spend that uh, week of their special week that uh, Alyssa talked about uh, with us learning about the techniques of equine reproduction as well. So there are uh, multiple opportunities to, to get to know people in the industry. Excellent, thank you. But in our VMRs. Yes, we um, we like to bring in a lot of our industry reps, um, guest speakers in to talk to our students um, throughout their um, VTAs in the program. We have the new work integrated learning. We have for our VMR students a three week practicum that they complete at the end of their program. So the HD students, like Alyssa said, they have a, a six week practicum and our VMR students complete a three week industry practicum, which does tend to lead to many, uh, many jobs and offers after their practicum has been completed. So um, we do have lots of opportunity and share all these resources and guest speakers um, coming in to help set our students up for success within this industry. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so one question we do have uh, is, why do these programs involve work experience components as part of the admissions process? So um, perhaps Alyssa, if you could elaborate on the AHT. Yeah, for sure. so I think that a lot of people, when they initially get into the veterinary field, they think that they would love to work in a vet clinic or in this industry because they love animals and they want to help animals. And then maybe if you go into work experience environment and get into a vet clinic, you might realize that it might not be for you, which is totally okay. There's lots of different that you can have a career with animals, but I think that that work experience time and spending that time in a clinic is really going to solidify. If you really want to pursue a career in the veterinary industry, or if maybe it might not be for you, because I think we would all hate for you guys to to enroll, to do your entire schooling, get to the end of it, to go work in a vet clinic, and then not like it after a month. So that really gives you a great opportunity to get out in industry, see if it's something that you really like. If you really like it, then that's going to really push you and really light that fire of, yes, I really want to do this. I really want to pursue this. This is the type of clinic that I want to work in. So I think that that's a huge bonus for, for you guys before you apply is spending that time in a clinic. Excellent. Thank you. And Dr. Mary, what about the equine reproduction test? Well, the program is, is not a beginner program. So um, the expectation is that when students get here, that they have experience handling horses. So they know how to behave around a horse, how to handle themselves around a horse, how to catch a horse, halt a horse, lead a horse, um, groom a horse, do all the basic things associated with the horse. So uh, when you get here, the expectation is that we notch it up a bit and you're going to learn how to handle a stallion during teasing and breeding. And you're going to, to learn how to uh, deal with different mares. You're gonna to have to learn about how to train foals to lead and those kind of things. So we want you to have the basic horse um, knowledge, skill and ability before you get here because uh, there is not time in the program to, to start at the beginning with how, how do you catch a horse and how do you lead a horse? Because the expectation is that you know that already. And so that's why we request 
some work experience associated in some type of horse related and it doesn't have to be breeding but some type of horse related uh, activity so that we know that you have experience and can handle yourself around a horse. Excellent, thank you. Um, Olivia, I have an admissions question for you. Okay, go ahead. So are, are the chances of admission into the AHT program improved when taking another animal science program first? So during the admission process for the Animal Health Technology Diploma, we do look at the four academic requirements first. So that's the English Language Arts 30-1, 30-2, the Biology 30, the Chemistry 30, and the Math 30-1 or 30-2. And so applicants with an academic average of 80% or higher are considered for the program. Now, anybody who's completed previous post-secondary can receive up to four additional percentage points onto their competitive academic average. So if you have a high school academic average that falls as a 78%, for example, you could obtain up to four percentage points more if you've completed certain levels of education. But the only animal health program that we offer that offers an alternate admission route into the Animal Health Technology Diploma is that Veterinary Medical Receptionist Certificate Program. Excellent, thank you. So could I please ask our panelists um, to tell us about the facilities that students will have access to in these programs? Yeah, so I can go first. So in the, the animal health technology program, we're actually undergoing a little, little lot of construction. <laughs> so what's going on at the moment is that we are getting a new animal health clinic. And in the future, when it opens, it will be quite lovely. But for now, our animal science building is kind of being ripped in half so that we can continue on with labs, but the other part of it can be renovated appropriately. So as of right now, there that's where our surgery dentistry suite is. Our radiology room is in there and our small animal clinical procedures room is in there with all the models and those sorts of things. We also use the DMP building and that's where we have some animal behavior handling courses and where our diagnostic lab is. So where we're going to be doing our hematology, urinalysis and uh, fecals, as well as our anatomy course. And then for the large animal cor courses, we're heading down to the barn. So we have the farrier room, which is attached to one of our riding arenas. We use the beef center for some of our cattle labs, the livestock center for some labs, and then they go to the sheep barn for some um, ovine or sheep handling labs as well. So it's kind of spread out quite a bit at the moment, which after this new building is made, everything will be a little bit more central, which will be nice. But for now, we're, we're kind of jumping through hoops to, to get all of the spaces utilized, but it's been, it's been an adventure. <laughs> It has been an adventure for many of our programs, so thank you. Um, also, if anyone is interested, you can take a tour of um, kind of a virtual tour of our new facilities uh, through the Olds College website too, I do believe. So uh, make sure to check those out. Uh, and Dr. Marion, how about in the equine areas? Um, well, we have a what I consider a state-of-the-art facility. We've been in this facility since 2009. It consists of a, a breeding barn that has uh, some holding stalls in it that we, we just use primarily just to hold horses for short term. It has uh, seven stocks for holding mares with uh, foal handling uh, component as well. Uh, there's a large lab in which we have our equipment for uh, semen evaluation um, preparation and also for cleanup and AV prep. And uh, associated with that barn then upstairs is what we call the loft, which is a little uh, room that, that's kind of a small 
is a quite a small uh, living area. It has bunk beds and sofas and and uh, microwaves and that kind of thing, sink in it. And that's where the students sleep um, or stay overnight during their full watches. And that, that uh, and they can watch then the cameras from up there. They can also watch the cameras from home as well. So attached to that breeding barn then is our breeding shed, which is quite a large breeding shed with the sand uh, ground on it. So it's large enough for lots of students to be in there for hand breeding. Uh, we have an adjustable dummy for uh, semen collection and uh, we have a, a, a tease wall and a little holding pen in there. And then we have our falling barn, which is a beautiful falling barn. It has six 16 by 16 stalls in it. Those stalls have bubble mat floor on them so that there's traction for foals when they try to stand up. Um, and as I mentioned, there's cameras that are available to watch those, all of those stalls. Uh, those cameras are, can be added, the, the uh, software for watching those cameras can be put on uh, students' phones, also students' computers. So all of us can watch the mares foaling either from the loft or from your own home or whatever. Um, and so we also, in addition to that, have quite a large area of penning. Um, we have a stallion row, which has eight stallion pens that are, are 40 by 60 that have uh, uh, alleyways between them. And then we have room there for about, um, I'm going to say, 40 head of mares. But then we also, in the peak of our busy season, which is May, uh, late April, May, and early June, we end up actually having to, to go into the board facility and use the board pens as well, because at that time of year, uh, there's no students other than my students on campus. And I guess AHTs are on campus at that time too, but uh, there are no board horses. So we can actually use the 24 board pens that are there. So there's horses, mares, foals, stallions all over the place. And uh, yeah, we have uh, excellent facilities. Excellent, thank you. And Carrie Ann, um, the VTA and VMR students use mostly the same spaces as our AHT students. Um, are there any other type of facilities you'd like to share with us? No, we we share with the the HT students here on campus. Um, currently, because of our construction, we are so excited to have our new animal health education center being built. Um, so we will share that space and uh, excited for the opportunities that that will come. Uh, and mostly right now, our classes are being held in the DMP, which is the Duncan Marshall Place where we uh, have an animal handling lab and a diagnostic lab, as Alyssa has mentioned. And so a lot of our classes are there. And then we have the online component for the VMR program, um, which of course is distance and they, they don't come to campus. Thank you. Um, so um, we're almost at our time at for the end of our presentation. Uh, we've covered um, the questions that we've been asked either um, through the chat panel or live here. Um, I'd like to give our panelists the opportunity to um, say any final words, whether it be about the program, the facilities, um, anything that um, you would like our students, to, our potential students to know um, as they apply for these programs. Let's start with AHT. Yeah, so for AHT, I think one, one thing or a couple of things that I think would be good for you guys to know is that it's a really great opportunity to come to this school and learn all of the hands-on knowledge that you'll get to learn. It's really unique to come here and have the opportunity to care for the rescue animals hands-on and to have this really great hands-on knowledge and work with the farm. Like just today, we brought in some cattle from the farm and were able to do a large animal lab on them with skills that these technicians are going to be using very soon as they head out into industry. So there's lots of really great hands-on learning opportunities. I might be biased because they're my coworkers, but the staff here are lovely and I find that they really do 
care about all of you. So if you do apply and you come to school here soon, you will be supported throughout your entire journey here. Everyone is so kind and welcoming. And it's such a great avenue of a career path to go down. There's so many different things that you can do besides working in a vet clinic and tons of opportunities out there. So if you're on the fence about applying, I would encourage you to get into some vet clinics, get some industry experience and see if you think this might be for you. And if it is, we are more than happy to welcome you in. And that that's all I got. <laughs> hey. And what about our equine programs? Excuse me, if you're interested in equine reproduction at all, this is the only program in Canada that will give you that type of experience. So uh, it, certainly there's the online component, which you can get elsewhere, but there is no other program in Canada that allows you to immerse yourself in an extremely busy commercial breeding and foaling program. And so when you come here, you will learn a lot. You will leave this program with skills that you never even knew that you could possess. Um, so uh, it's a, a total immersion program, the hands-on component. When you leave here, uh, the opportunities for you to either work uh, at a breeding farm or establish your own breeding facility, or we have quite a few students that are actually uh, working for veterinarians who are operating a equine re reproductive facility, um, and so their skills are very, very, uh, they're, they're hard to find, and so people that have the skills in, in collecting stallions, inseminating, uh, evaluating semen, folding out mares, um, you know, reading all the scenes, all of that kind of stuff is uh, something that you will become extremely uh, capable and skilled in at the end of this program. So if you are at all interested, and the interesting thing that I find is that some people stumble onto the program just because, and they don't really know about it, and they come here and they discover that they have a passion for equine reproduction. And uh, I have a passion for equine reproduction, and so um, I try to pass that passion on. Uh, it, it's an a, a interesting, exciting, and very rewarding field for anybody who is leaning toward uh, what can I do in the equine world. If you are an animal health technology student, um, there's opportunities there to become more, uh, to develop more expertise and uh, skill in equine reproduction that gives you then uh, a bigger resume and lots more opportunities to work in, say, an equine reproductive practice. So um, lots of opportunity and not only that, but it's a lot of fun. Excellent. Thank you. And Carrie Ann? Yes, I also echo Dr. Anderson's and Alyssa's comments. The, the staff here is very passionate about the, the industry, the programs, the courses they teach. Um, the it's a it's a wonderful being here on campus but i love that the vmr program gives you options if um you want to take it on campus or a distance online so i love the ability for the the students to choose the path um that may suit their their lifestyle or um you know their learning styles best so i i love that we have some options for you in the vmr program and uh the vta program again is wonderful the Work experience that you get out to do beforehand lets you see the team, um, seeing our receptionist, our tech assistants, our RVTs, the DVMs, everyone working together as a team, um, and getting to see, you know, how would you like to fit into that picture in our in the veterinary clinic. So it's uh, it's fantastic, and yeah, I hope to see some of you back here on campus one day. Well, thank you so much again to our panelists for joining us tonight. Um, it was so great to have you participate and share those behind the scenes and students are able to put faces to names and see these staff um, that they'll be working with when they get here on campus. So uh, thank you very much for spending the time with us tonight um, and sharing all of this great knowledge with our, with our students. Um, so we have come to the end of our question and answer period. Um, 
like I said, we've wrapped up the list of questions that we've had and those questions that have come in. Um, so again, we would like to um, let our attendees know that if you leave with any questions tonight, um, please do not hesitate to send us an email at animals at oldscollege.ca and we will be sure to get that information to you um, and have all of your questions answered. So again, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. And as I see no more questions come in, we're going to say good night um, and we look forward to hearing from you all. Have a good night. Thanks good again. Night. Thank you. Thank you.